Welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo video for grades 7 and 8 on strategy problems. After this introduction, there are four questions to solve. So be sure to have a paper and a pencil ready. And please feel free to pause the video to first try the question on your own. A plane is a surface. More concretely, a plane is a flat two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely far. A visual representation of a plane is shown on the screen. When lines are placed on a plane, the plane is cut into different regions. From the visual on the screen, we can see that the plane has been cut into seven regions by three intersecting lines. In geometry, an angle can be defined as a figure formed by two rays meeting at a common endpoint. An angle can be represented by the symbol on the screen. Now let's look at the angle on the screen. This angle will be named as angle AOB, where O is the vertex of the angle, and the measurement of this angle is 35 degrees. Angles are measured in degrees. A 90 degree angle is a right angle. An angle that is less than 90 degree is an acute angle. An angle that is larger than 90 degree but less than 180 degrees is an obtuse angle. A visual representation of the three kinds of angle are shown on the screen. An angle that is 180 degree is a straight line, or we can call it a half rotation. An angle that is 360 degree is a ray, or we can call it a full rotation. And an angle that is greater than 180 degree and less than 360 degree is a reflex angle. The three different angles are shown on the screen. Here is a practice problem that will help you understand the concept of angles. In this diagram, we're given that angle AOB is equal to 30 degrees and angle COD is a right angle. I want you to find the measure of angle AOC, angle BOC, angle AOE, and angle BOD. And then I want you to name the type of angle they are. Please pause this video and try this question on your own. Did you get them correct? Here is a solution to the practice problem. Angle AOC is equal to angle AOD minus angle COD. Since we know that angle AOD is equal to 180 degrees and angle COD is equal to 90 degrees, then we can know that angle AOC is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, which is equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, angle AOC is a right angle. To find angle BOC, we can subtract angle AOB from angle AOC. Since we know that angle AOC is equal to 90 degrees and angle AOB is equal to 30 degrees, then angle BOC is equal to 60 degrees. Since 60 degrees is less than 90 degrees, then angle BOC is an acute angle. Angle AOE is equal to angle AOD plus angle DOE, which is equal to 180 degrees plus 30 degrees. That means angle AOE is equal to 210 degrees. Since 210 degrees is greater than 180 degrees and less than 360 degrees, then angle AOE is a reflex angle. Lastly, we have angle BOD. Angle BOD equals to angle BOC plus angle COD, which is equal to 60 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is equal to 150 degrees. Since 150 degrees is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees, therefore we can know that Angle BOD is an obtuse angle. Now, let's try some questions. Question 1 asks, What is the smallest number of straight lines needed to divide the plane into exactly five regions? Please pause the video to first try this problem on your own before proceeding to watch the answer. First, let us consider all possible positions of three straight lines on the plane. Three straight lines can divide the plane into six regions shown in figure A and figure B, seven regions in figure C, or four regions in figure D. 
Three lines can only divide the plane into six, seven, or four regions, but not five regions. Therefore, we need at least four lines. Four straight lines, however, can divide the plane into five regions, which is shown in figure E. Therefore, the minimum number of lines that satisfies the requirement in the question is four. Thus, the correct answer to this question is B. Now let's move on to question two. Question two asks, what is the smallest number of points one needs to remove from the figure so that no three of the remaining points are on the same line? Please pause the video to try this question on your own before proceeding to watch the solution. To satisfy the requirement that no three dots lie on the same line, one should remove at least one dot from each row. However, each dot from each row should be selected from a different column so that no three dots lie on the same column. Furthermore, for there to be less than three dots on each diagonal, the dot that is removed from the second row should be the one in the second column. Doing so results in no less than three dots total being removed. It is, however, possible to remove three dots exactly from the figure such that no three of the remaining points are on the same line. Observe the following arrangements. Note that they are the same arrangement, just rotated 90 degrees from each other. The correct answer to this question is C. We are now ready for question 3. By drawing 9 lines, 5 horizontal and 4 vertical, Peter can construct a table with 12 cells. If he had used 6 horizontal and 3 vertical lines, he would have constructed a table with 10 cells only. At most, how many cells will there be in a table constructed by a total of 15 lines? Please pause the video and try this question on your own. We need to understand that for a given total number of lines, the maximum number of cells occurs when the numbers of the horizontal and vertical lines are as close to each other as possible, or when the difference between the two numbers is the least possible. Observe the table on the right of the products of pairs of values that have a sum of 13. As we can see in the table, if value A was 1, then value B has to be 12. The difference between value A and value B is 11, and the product of the two values is 12. If value A was 6 and value B was 7, the difference between value A and value B is 1, and the product of the two values is 42. Notice how the product increases as the difference between value A and value B decreases. Based on the observation from the previous steps, we understand that if the total number of lines is 15, the numbers 7 and 8 are such a pair of numbers that minimize the difference between them, which is demonstrated by figure A and figure B. Having 7 horizontal lines and 8 vertical lines creates a table with 6 rows and 7 columns, which is demonstrated by figure A. And we can also have the vice versa with eight horizontal lines and seven vertical lines, which creates a table with seven rows and six columns, as demonstrated by figure B. Both result in a total of 42 cells. Thus, the answer is E. And we are ready for the next question. We will now proceed to the last question of today. Question number four. Several straight lines are drawn on the plane so that all angles 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees are among the angles between these lines. Determine the smallest possible number of these straight lines, and we're given five choices from 4 to 8. First of all, the problem requires us to define the minimal number of straight lines needed to create 9 angles with different measure, that is, 8 acute angles and 1 right angle. Note that the following example shows that we can satisfy the requirement 
with five lines as shown on the diagram. Indeed, all angles but 10, 40, 60, 80, and 90 degrees are already shown. Then, we can find the missing angles using the existing angles. Observe that angle COA equals to 70 degrees plus 20 degrees, and that's equal to 90 degrees. Angle DOA prime is equal to 30 degrees plus 50 degrees, and that is equal to 80 degrees. Angle COD is equal to 90 degrees minus 80 degrees, or 10 degrees. Angle CED is equal to 10 degrees plus 30 degrees, or 40 degrees. And lastly, angle BOE is equal to 40 degrees plus 20 degrees, or 60 degrees. We just found a solution with five straight lines. Now we will proceed and prove that it needs no less than five straight lines to make these angle possible. We will prove it in two different approaches. Let's take a look at approach number one. This approach used combinatorial method. Note that any two straight lines create exactly one acute angle and one obtuse angle, or two right angles. But in either case, we will only obtain one angle in the given range. We can see that four straight lines create four times three divided by two, or six angles in the side range. And that is the number of ways to choose two lines out of four. Thus, it is not possible to create nine angles in the side range with four straight lines. We have seen how we can prove our lemma using combinatorial method in approach one. But approach two will make us think inductively. Note that two straight lines create one angle in the side range. By adding the third line, we create two new angles in the side range in addition to the angle we already have. Namely, the angles between the third and the first and the third and the second lines. Thus, three straight lines create three angles in the side range. Note that by adding the fourth line, we can create three new angles in the side range in addition to three we already have. These are the angles between the fourth and every other line. Therefore, four lines create one plus two plus three, or six angles. Thus, it is not possible to create nine angles in the side range with four straight lines. In conclusion, we have found one solution with five straight lines. And we also prove that a solution must have no less than five straight lines. From the above statements, it is clear that five is the smallest possible number of straight lines we need, and that corresponds to answer choice B. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new.